When I was a kid, I would occasionally turn on the TV and see this really old guy dressed in white, hunched over a microphone and struggling to speak. Yet for some reason, this guy was a celebrity, like Michael Jackson or Princess Diana. Thousands of people would flock to his big house to catch sight of him and to hear his prayers. As a young child in Australia, I found these images really bizarre. I asked my dad, who is that guy? That's the Pope, John Paul II, he replied. He lives in the Vatican. Where's the Vatican, I asked. In Italy, but he's originally from Poland. His real name is Karol. Carol, I replied. That's a girl's name. I think John Paul sounds much better. The fact is I had tuned into a much later stage of the Pope's life. I had missed out on the two decades of his career when his charismatic gestures and words of inspiration were causing huge changes in parts of the world I had never heard of. It wasn't until I first travelled to Poland in 2010 that I realised just how important this guy really was. Not just for Poles, but for the entire world. And whether you're a devout Catholic or an atheist, you can't deny the influence of Pope John Paul II. Karol Wojtyła was born on the 18th of May 1920 in Wadowice, a small Polish town 50 kilometers southwest of Kraków. He was the youngest surviving child of Emilia, a school teacher, and Karol Wojtyła Sr., an administrative officer in the Polish army. A devout Catholic family of modest means, Karol had a fairly happy childhood until tragedy struck when he was nine years old. His mother died suddenly, followed by his brother Edmund three years later. After graduating from high school in 1938, Karol Wojtyła moved with his father to Kraków and enrolled in Polish studies at the Jagiellonian University. But his studies were soon interrupted by the German invasion of Poland and the outbreak of World War II. During the war, Wojtyła spent his days cutting stone in Kraków Zakszówek Quarry and at night he studied theology. He was also active in sports, notably soccer and kayaking and had an interest in the arts, performing in an underground theatre company. Along with his seminary studies, under the Archbishop of Kraków, these activities all had to be done in secret, as they were strictly forbidden under the Nazi occupation. His father's death from a heart attack in 1941 left Karol with no close family at just 20 years old. As a result, he drew even closer to the community and family offered by the Catholic Church. And soon after the war, in 1946, he was ordained as a priest. Wojtyła then travelled to Rome to complete his doctorate in theology, where he also ministered to Polish immigrants and refugees. Appointed as Auxiliary Bishop of Kraków in 1958, at the age of just 38, Poland's youngest bishop spent the next 20 years in the city, and later was elevated to Cardinal of Poland in 1967. But things would really change in 1978, when Pope John Paul I died suddenly just 33 days into his papacy. In what was viewed as a rather shocking appointment at the time, Karol Wojtyła was elected Pope on October the 16th, 1978. His appointment made him the first non-Italian pontiff in 400 years. Pope John Paul II's charismatic yet welcoming presence made him an internationally popular figure beyond the sphere of Catholicism. He is often referred to as the TV Pope, and for good reason. Whenever you switched on the TV, John Paul II was in a different country, meeting a new world leader, and even guys like this. But it's his role in the fall of communism in Europe that is often cited as his biggest achievement. As Archbishop of Kraków, Wojtyła's sermons always had a discernible anti-communist subtext, but it wasn't until his ascension as Pope that he openly began encouraging his countrymen to demand political change. In 1979, a year after assuming the papacy, Pope John Paul II returned to Poland in what is commonly regarded as the pivotal point in the downfall of the communist system across Europe. Preaching 32 sermons across Poland in just nine days, the Pope created what is often referred to as a psychological earthquake, an effect that was visible even amongst the communist authorities. Solidarity leader Lech Wałęsa would later comment, these people were radishes, red on the outside, but white on the inside. We were no longer afraid of radishes. The Pope's brief return to the homeland had offered hope and unity amongst the population, lighting a flame that later exploded into the Solidarity Revolution, 
eventually toppling Poland's communist regime in the late 1980s and starting a domino effect across Eastern Europe. Despite a failed smear campaign by the Polish communist authorities and an assassination attempt in 1981, rumoured to be the work of a KGB Stasi plot, the Pope's faith remained unshaken. He even later visited and forgave the Turkish assassin who had shot him several times in the stomach. As the Pope continued to make public appearances and travel extensively around the world, his touring vehicle was customised with a bulletproof cabin, becoming what is now known in popular culture as the Popemobile. His final visit to Krakow in 2002 will live long in the memory of many locals, culminating in a massive outdoor sermon in the Buonia Meadow that drew a staggering crowd of 2.5 million people. After more than 25 years as Pope, including two assassination attempts, several cancer scares, hearing loss, and a public diagnosis of osteoarthritis and Parkinson's disease, Pope John Paul II passed away at the age of 85 on April 2, 2005. The world grieved, but Polish society came to a standstill with six official days of national mourning. Entertainment and cultural events were canceled and bars and clubs across the country closed their doors as a mark of respect. Tributes from world leaders poured in and Vatican officials immediately began referring to the late Pope as John Paul the Great. His papacy was the second longest in history and left a lasting legacy not least in his work to combat world poverty, his fierce criticism of armed conflict, and his commitment to bringing the church back to the masses. Pope John Paul II's case for canonization was immediately commenced by his successor, Pope Benedict XVI, and the obligatory miracles that are required for an eligible sainthood came in the form of a French nun cured from Parkinson's disease and a Costa Rican lawyer who recovered from a terminal brain aneurysm. He was beatified on May 1, 2011, and his canonization took place on April the 27th, 2014, alongside that of Pope John the 23rd. A crowd of 800,000 turned out to witness the event in Rome, and many millions more tuned in via television from around the world. But in Poland, Pope John Paul II is more than just a Catholic saint. He's a national icon. Every residence he ever held, and most landmarks with even the smallest connection to the late pontiff, are either museums or marked with a statue or commemorative plaque. His portrait still hangs in the walls of living rooms across Poland, and the devout still turn to his image in search of spiritual guidance. So much so is the legacy of Pope John Paul II, that at the time of this video's recording, the Catholic Church has already begun the beatification process for his parents. If it's a miracle you're looking for, it may be that a Pole was able to become the head of the Catholic Church and left an indelible mark on Poland and the world for good. So guys, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you leave a comment below. And if you're interested in seeing more content, you can keep us going via donation to our Zhutka campaign. See the link below. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.